pipe water from the plentiful Great Lakes to deserted towns in the west like Phoenix and Las Vegas. For as long as this idea has been proposed, the concept has been shot down by vehement resistance from the Great Lakes states whose legislators have crafted an agreement with Canada to prevent just this scenario. Let's dive into the concept of how this idea can be carried forward and is there a possibility for such a concept to happen. Before we begin, please subscribe to our channel. The head water scientist at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California is the most recent individual to envision massive Great Lakes water diversions as a future likelihood, which may cause some in the Midwest to perform a double take. In an interview with Ideastream.org, a nonprofit that owns and operates Cleveland Public Broadcasting Stations on April 4th, Jay Familieri, a hydrologist and senior water scientist at JPL, brought up the prospect. The purpose of Familieri's trip to Cleveland, Ohio, was to participate in a lecture series at Case Western Reserve University. You may imagine that there is a gigantic bullseye that can be seen from space that's sitting above the Great Lakes, meaning it is a target area in a sense for the rest of the country," Familieri said, referring to the region's availability of potable fresh water. In 50 years, you can imagine that there might surely be a pipeline that carries water from the Great Lakes to Phoenix, said one Arizonan. Because there's so much fresh water, you can imagine that. Around the Great Lakes, those are considered fighting terms. For Love of Water or Flow is a nonprofit organization dedicated to protecting the Great Lakes and its executive director, Liz Kirkwood, has said, I don't think people in this region feel that it's part of our future. While the Great Lakes Compact, an agreement between the eight states bordering the lakes and signed into law by President George W. Bush in 2008, is the primary safeguard for the lake's water supply in the Midwest. The global water crisis is far worse than most people imagine. Familiarity told Idea Stream, the compact's primary goal is to stop the export of substantial quantities of water from the Great Lakes area. The Great Lakes provinces of Ontario and Quebec, both in Canada, are parties to a parallel binational pact. However, as Familieri points out, laws and regulations preserving the Great Lakes could be attacked, overturned in a national intervention if the need for fresh water potentially escalates into an even worse catastrophe in the western US later this century. Because of these factors, he continued, I think that for these reasons, that we do have water in some places, the northern half of the country has a lot more water than the southern half, and so as the population grows and as climate continues to change, we probably will have to move water from where it is to where it is not, and that will require rethinking of some of these policies and laws. The expenditures in constructing and maintaining a pipeline network are also extremely high. The cost of the energy required to transport water across long distances is substantial, Sherwick added. Just thinking about the energy needed to pump water from Duluth, Minnesota to Phoenix, Arizona via pipeline is mind-boggling. If you're talking about a pipeline from Duluth, Minnesota to Phoenix, Arizona, just imagine getting the water over the Continental Divide, said one expert. And it's an ongoing expense. It's not a one-time charge. Kirkwood speculated that the tens of billions of dollars necessary for such a project may begin making the Pacific Ocean a much larger and much closer water supply for the Southwest a more logistically realistic and cheap option through the use of large-scale desalinization. Shrek argued that other potentially more rational methods wouldn't necessitate tens of thousands of miles of pipes. The amazing thing about all these plants is we still have so far to go on conservation and water efficiency, he remarked. Perhaps it's not the best plan to keep expanding and sprawling into dry, waterless areas. If people are literally facing this kind of situation, there's so many things it can do before considering hundreds of billions of dollars infrastructure investment. The United States, in its pursuit of a shipping channel between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans in the early 1990s, split a country, Panama, in half with a canal. There's also an American flag and possibly a dune buggy or two up on the moon. Testimonies to the country's ability to accomplish costly and far-fetched when it decides it really wants to. Having a NASA scientist wonder aloud whether the Great Lakes are for sale just heightens the urgency of being here to tackle the remaining critical issues that the Great Lakes Compact has not yet answered," Kirkwood added. Since this is not an immediate threat, Shrek believes there's still time to discover alternative, more effective responses. The hope would be that before you need to do such a thing, we manage our resources better across the country," he said. So this was all on this topic. Hope you enjoyed our video. If you find it interesting, please do like our video and subscribe to our channel. We'll see you in the next one.